Good evening. It's a piece of nature that goes hand in hand with California, that being the Joshua tree. They only grow in a small handful of places across the world, and one of those spots is not far from Tehachapi in the Mojave Desert. That's why when one local woman says she found a bunch of them cut down in eastern Kern County, she wanted answers and reached out to us. 23 ABC's John Madden gives us a look at what happened and goes in depth into why the endangered species title may not provide the type of protection you think it does in this month's long investigation. This is not normal for the dirt to look like this. What's usually a place of joy. It's really sad and it angers me. Is now the opposite for Julie Weigel. As you can see, they're pretty good sized tracks. They're not a little tractor. It's big bulldozer. Bulldozer tracks and leftover debris now covers the area she goes hiking at. Who's doing this and why and it's not right. Those are questions she continues to ask in a location just southwest of Mojave off of Tehachapi Willow Springs Road, where it's common to see Joshua trees. But in a place you can only get to by a dirt road, those unique tree-like plants are visibly absent. It's only certain sections, however. The east side of this dirt road has a bunch of Joshua trees, but on the other side, not so much. And Weigel says, they all ended up here. They were at least 50 foot long piles, at least probably 20, 30 foot high, um, just piles and piles of Joshua trees. These are pictures Weigel says she took of the piles back in February. She says all those trees were still standing just weeks before those picks. She estimates hundreds, if not thousands, were cut down. And all that's left is what you see scattered across the dirt. Places where this huge mound of Joshua trees were are now this fuzzy mulch Joshua tree that you can just see that they're trying to hide. Part of Weigel's anger stems from the fact that Western Joshua trees were granted temporary endangered species status back in September of 2020. They remain on the list in the most updated version from July 2021. Some say climate change is one of their biggest threats since they require colder temperatures to help with pollination. However, even with that endangered status, that doesn't mean they're fully protected. Anyone who digs up a Joshua tree, bulldozes a Joshua tree, chops off a limb, anything of that sort is now illegal under state law unless it falls under a narrow exemption that occurs during this year-long candidacy period. To help meet California's renewable energy goals, state officials are allowing 15 solar energy projects, each managed by multiple companies, which you see on this list, the option to quote, take or remove any Joshua trees that would be in the way of their development. Those companies were selected since they had already started their work before that temporary protection was granted. The projects can or already have taken place in several counties, including Kern, before Joshua trees can reach permanent endangered status. The threat of climate change really is an existential threat to the species. And so the only way we're going to save Joshua trees um, is to get to 100% renewable energy. Brendan Cummings is an environmental lawyer with the Center for Biological State Diversity in California. California. He was critical of the decision last year and feels the same this year. If the solution to climate change is to cut down the habitat, cut down thousands of a climate threatened tree, that's not really the solution. So the question is, who did this? 23ABC first made CDFW aware of what was going on back in February. At that time, they said, quote, the matter is under investigation and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife has a longstanding policy not to comment on investigations. We followed up with them again in July, but they never responded. We also submitted a public records request to CDFW for the documents related to the authorization of removing Joshua trees around that location. After four months of waiting, they responded by referring us to that document that lists those 15 solar projects. We also reached out to the Kern County Planning and Natural Resources Department. Their executive director says the construction is part of the Terrigen Sanborn Solar Project. They also say construction has been ongoing for months. But on that list of approved solar projects, which allows the take of Joshua trees, it includes one for Terrigen, but it's the Edwards Air Force Base Solar Project. The Sanborn one is not on that list. 
This is a map of the Sanborn Solar Project, which is east of the construction in question. When we asked for clarification about that specific spot marked by this red arrow, the planning department said, quote, an intertie connecting line is part of the project. This completes our comment on this matter. We then asked for further clarification about that connecting line, including if it's this green area, labeled as Jintai Study. According to the map, it's the furthest point west of the Sandborn project, but does not extend to the construction in question. We never got a response. So without a clear indication of who's responsible, it could also be a case of breaking the rules. If it's happening outside of one of those solar projects, um, then that's likely illegal removal. As for Weigel, right she us. says it's likely her favorite hiking spot will never look the same. Joshua trees take decades to grow, so if this area was to go back to how she knew it, she may not be around to see it. It's not easy as just going out and planting an oak tree. It's, you know, sad. In Kern County, John Madden, 23 ABC, connecting you. And 23ABC also reached out to Terrigen about the project in question and if they're building on that area of land where the Joshua trees were cut down, but they have not yet responded. There is currently an assessment going on by the state to see if Joshua trees will be placed on the permanent endangered species list or be removed from that temporary status. That decision is expected sometime this fall. If they are placed on that list, it becomes increasingly harder for any of those trees to be allowed to be cut down. Well, we were curious about the penalties for cutting down a Joshua tree or destroying an endangered plant, and it turns out it is quite costly. Tonight, we're taking a deeper look into those consequences. According to Fish and Wildlife, for unlawful taking of an endangered, threatened, or candidate species, that penalty could be a fine not less than $25,000 or more than $50,000 for each violation. But recently, a couple living near Joshua Tree National Park were not punished as severe as that. They were fined $18,000 for cutting down 36, tree, 36 trees on their property. Also removing or damaging plants from property that a person does not own without permission may constitute trespass and or petty theft. Depending on how much is removed, it could also result in time behind bars.